Hello, my loves. Welcome or welcome back to Chemistry with Kismet Tarot. I'm Monica, the Kismet Chemist. And today's reading is a double inspiration. So first of all, I want to give a shout out to Amanda Dunn from the Dunn Creative for it was a conversation that her and I and our friend Jesse had that brought this back into my awareness. It was something I was really called to a couple of weeks ago, but it also is combined with something that I have felt really, really strongly. So we have just, you know, we're, we're just about to move into the new moon phase after having the full moon and total lunar eclipse in Scorpio that happened, um, I believe it was May 15th, May 16th, depending on where you were in the world. After that eclipse, I noticed um, a lot more vivid dreams, a lot more um, nightly messages, trouble sleeping. Um, and I was hearing this from multiple people. There were, you know, my one of my best friends out in Alaska had messaged me and talked to me about these dreams she was having. And I know that Amanda and Jesse have both mentioned it to me. And I feel very strongly as though these two things are connected. The lunar eclipse is asking us to allow ourselves to look into the things that we don't want to, to allow ourselves to release the things that have served their time in our lives, and to allow ourselves more than anything to feel the emotions that we have been putting aside and pushing away and not allowing ourselves to feel. And it's... It's this calling for, it's time to see these things, it's time to understand these things on a different level, and it's time to allow yourself to feel the emotions that you need to feel and work through them. So we have four piles, pile one with the jaguar, pile two with the ancient ones, pile three with the crow, and pile four with fire. So I want you to take your time and take a look at the cards find the pile that is calling to you and we will find out what the eclipsed dreams have been bringing into your life Hello, pile one. If you chose the first card, the Jaguar card, it is the card number 28, which reduces to a 10. And I am being called very strongly not to reduce it further than that. Um, in numerology, we try to reduce it down to the single digit number. But um, this is more, leave it, I, I keep feeling leave it at the 10 because 10 is a number of completion. And that is a firm feeling here. Um, but before we get into that, let's read what the Jaguar card is. And I'm just going to be reading from the book. This is for the Mystical Shaman Oracle. So it says, The essence of the Jaguar is the protector of all life in the Amazon. And in times of fear, she brings courage and certainty. Jaguar is at the top of the food chain and never becomes prey. With great stealth, she can track her mark from a distance and not be seen or heard. She moves gracefully through the jungle, relishing the abundance of the rainforest, fearless and at ease. Jaguar knows the ways beyond death and is master of the shadows, blending invisibly between light and dark, night and day. The invitation says, The jaguar calls you to explore beyond the walls that confine you. 
to go outside your normal routine to push your limits and boundaries. She is delivering an invitation from your own future to investigate the unknown, to venture into the mystery and the dark places you have been reluctant to explore. Toss all caution to the wind. Know that your jaguar instinct will serve you well. The medicine says, what in your life needs to be released? What have you carried around with you for far too long? Which is ready to be let go of once and for all. Jaguar medicine is available to heal the fear so you can allow it to go. It's time to come out of the shadows and end the shadow games that you may have unconsciously agreed to play. Call on Jaguar to unfetter you from toxic relationships and recover your natural instinct for the right people and situations. Okay, so the first thing that I picked up with this um, was I was getting a bunch of images of somebody who is like um, either walking through a house and there are many, many doors and you go through a door and then you're in another house with many, many doors and you're, you're trying to find the right door to get out of the house. Um, that was one of them. Another one was, again, another house where somebody was going through and trying to open a door and it was locked and then... The door would disappear and the, another door would appear and that one would be locked but it would be a different color or um, it would have a different pattern like almost like etching on it and there is this especially with the second one there's this building sense of frustration because you want to find the door and you want to open the door and you know you're meant to find the door and open the door but you can't seem to get there the other one that I saw was somebody who um, is trying to move. Um, it's kind of like you're floating in the air and you're trying to get somewhere. I mean, I keep hearing glass ceiling, but it's not quite glass. And so you keep hit like moving into it or pushing it and it stretches a little bit, but it never, it never, you can never break through it. Um, and I think that's why I'm hearing glass ceiling because the concept of the glass ceiling is you've reached the pinnacle of of where you are at or you've you've gone as far as you can go on this journey and now you're at the glass ceiling but the thing about the glass ceiling concept is the glass ceiling concept is there for us to break it we're, we're meant to to learn that we are able to break through the glass ceiling however it's when when you try to pass through this or when you try to open the door or when you try to find the right door and you're continually coming up against these obstacles, the feeling that you have is this sense of growing frustration that, and and at the same time, there's this almost sense of running away from something. And what I'm hearing is look behind, look behind, look behind. And you don't want to look behind you because if you look behind you, then you'll see the thing that you're trying to get away from. But if you were to look behind you and see that thing, you would understand that it is not nearly as scary as it seems and you can't actually escape it. And it feels very much to me as though this is um, subconscious shadow energy. So there are times where we can do a lot of, of shadow work while we're awake but there will still be pieces that we can't seem to access. Our conscious mind doesn't want to touch on to certain pieces. And that's a, a natural um, self-protection mode that we can go into. And that's why when we go to sleep, spirit, our guides will surround us and, and help us pull those pieces out that we aren't consciously ready to look at so that it can manifest in our dreams so we are able to progress in our healing and progress in our life when it's time for us to do so by bringing it out in, this, in a symbolic form. So the more and more frustrated you are in your dream because you, you're seemingly moving forward but it's still a constant block or a constant puzzle or journey or maze or something the reason why is because you're trying to move into something by escaping something else and in the realm of shadow work 
that would be considered what we call spiritual bypassing. And spirit doesn't want that. D like, it, it's not, this isn't a reflection of you doing anything wrong at this point. It's spirit saying, I want you to be whole when this next door opens. I want you to know this piece, to see this piece, and to make your peace with it. To allow this completion to happen by releasing this part. And when you do that, when you allow yourself to release that part, then the door will open. Then you will find the right door. Then that glass ceiling will break. Depending on which which category or which type of dream it is that you're having, that that's how you have to do that. So when you wake up, what you can do is journal it or meditate on it or... Even just allow yourself to become a little bit more aware of a different way in which signs can be coming into your life. When fear arises within us and we aren't able to identify that fear outside of ourselves, we can very easily fall into a running pattern. And this is saying we understand where you're at. We understand how hard it is. We understand where you want to go. And we are on board with that. But we also understand that if this piece of fear is not seen and accepted and and worked through, this fear, when you move here, is going to amplify. And I'm being shown the way that the lunar eclipse looked. And I got to see it firsthand. So I did see how it did appear to be that blood moon. But it was kind of hazy. Um, almost as if it was trying to shine through. But there was this continual cloud over it. And that is exactly the correlation here is spirit and your guides know you want to shine through they know that you're ready to shine through you know you're ready to shine through you know you're ready for this next step and that this next step is where you will shine and if if the time isn't taken to address this one fear this this one lingering fear that you either haven't been able to see before which is what I feel very strongly for a lot of you. You just haven't been able to see it before. Or some, very few of you, don't want to see. If you don't address it, then when you come forth to shine through, you'll always have that little cloud. So the shine that you come out into the world with will be dulled and it won't be true to you. And... The jaguar is here to show you how to move through the shadows, how to move into the light, how to understand both of these things and how to take yourself out of this toxic back and forth. And it's not about necessarily toxic relationships in your outside world so much as it is the toxic relationship that can occur with your own fears. And it's here to help you understand that you are protected on this journey, that you are worthy of this and that you have a manner of cloaking yourself as you go into the shadows to keep you safe so that you can handle it, you can deal with it, you can heal it, and you can move forward. All right, let's get a little bit more information. Um, and I just want to leave this open. I'm, I'm allowing spirit to just channel through me for what I'm sh being shown, what I feel, what I hear. And we'll see what happens here. Okay. We have heartache and loss. Rejoice in celebration. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of duality, but see, and we've got three and three. Um, and the card three signifies the ascended masters. It also is about collaboration and community and coming together. Um, it's also a very divine energy and divine numerology because it you think about the trinity of the father the son and the spirit or um the higher the lower and the middle worlds or even the father and the mother and the child 
the maiden, the mother, and the crone. Everything is a kind of threefold occurrence. It's a very divine number. So this is this is a very very strong um the divine is helping bring these things out so that you can understand whatever heartache and loss it is that has created this fear created the illusion of this fear so that you are able to move forward and when you do do when you <laughs> do do sorry <laughs> giggle <laughs> um i'm sorry i have a husband who's like a 12 year old but when you do begin to shine out into the world what you will find is instead of additional heartache and loss you will find rejoice and celebration so a lot of this is your mind versus your heart okay see and it's literally three cards that came out so i'll put these away we have the card two with the waiting game, the card four with the heart chakra, That's and the card eight with trapped in fear. And yeah, absolutely. So a lot of the times when we, when we feel as though we're being put on pause, and that's what I feel with this waiting game, is, is there's a sense of I've, I've been put on pause. I don't know why I'm on pause, but I'm put on pause you don't realize where it is that the pause is coming from and the pause is actually coming from this trapped in fear and you can literally see somebody sitting in front of glass windows this to me is is saying that it's almost as though there is this equal measure of i'm afraid of getting hurt again but i'm also afraid that I won't ever experience this or I will be successful but but the cost of the success is is sacrificing my heart and I know in the spiritual community we talk about sacrifice a lot and I think that we um it can be misconstrued sacrifice can be deeply misconstrued because if you're sacrificing something that you love it's not it's it's to me, that's not a true sacrifice because if you love something, it's there in your life for a reason because you love it. And so you are actually sacrificing love. And what are you sacrificing love for? You sacrifice love for fear. So it's kind of asking you to really get more in touch with your heart and get into the shadows of the things that you're afraid to allow yourself to fully love. What are you afraid to allow into your heart? Because once you allow something into your heart, there's always that risk of heartache and loss. That's the world that we live in. But if you sit and you wait for it to happen, if you wait for the other shoe to drop, if you wait for this thing to fall apart, or you wait to, you know, anything, when it comes to your heart, you, you wait in this expectation of what came before. You never allow yourself to move out of it because you trap yourself in a state of fear. But when you are able to break yourself free of it because you can see it now, you understand that why the reason why you're waiting is literally because your heart chakra is being opened more. It's being cleansed and cleared so that you can move into a celebratory energy. So you don't have to keep feeling this fear of being held back or going the wrong direction or making the wrong choice or never getting out of the situation that you're in or never being able to break that glass ceiling. So we have, that's beautiful, card 34, door to personal healing and happiness. And like I said, man, doors, a lot of doors are, are very, um, oops, sorry, hiccup, very prevalent here, but I'm seeing a dove I'm also, there's also, I've never noticed this, a peacock in the background there. Um, so this is literally saying that you're going to find this door. You're going to walk it through this door. And when you do, you're going to become the peacock. And the peacock has all this beautiful plumage, but they're a very majestic bird. And they, 
they really are seen as like this is the epitome of you shining yourself into the world they walk tall they walk proud because they know they're worthy of it and you're going to find that door when you stop allowing yourself to be trapped in fear when you are put on pause you're you're never put on pause for a the wrong reason it's never because you're being punished it's always because it's time for you to make sure that you aren't welcoming in a fear that you are meant to work your way beyond at this point point. and then we have the card number two with journey so yeah this again it's essentially saying there's there's this this new I don't, it's almost like a new beginning, a new path perhaps, but it's not necessarily, I never, I never tend to read the, the motion cards as, as actual motion. It can always be actual motion, but what I'm caught by is she's on this bridge and on one side of the bridge, there are these hand ropes. But the other side of the bridge, there isn't that. So it's like she's about to step off of the side that doesn't have a handhold. You're about, it's it's like the baby bird lead, leaving the nest. It's releasing the need for someone else to tell you where you're going and trusting in where your heart is leading you. And when you are able to p step into that that trust, that that's where that door finally opens that glass ceiling finally you break through that glass ceiling or that glass wall or you know kind of rubber wall is kind of what it looks like in my clairvoyance but you're able to finally get your get to the right door and get out of the right door get through that that wall that's been blocking you because you understand there's nothing to fear in this journey of life Everything that happens, happens because it's a lesson we're meant to learn. And when we learn it, then it's time for a new journey. And yes, of course, that can be frightening in the very beginning. It can be. And there is, I'm not going to not acknowledge that. And spirit does not want to not acknowledge that. It can be because it's a new experience. It's a new journey. Even if it's still from the confines of your four walls in your house, it's still something new for you. You're still choosing to come forth into the world, shining out and shining your heart out and sharing your heart with others. And sharing your heart with others can be very, very scary because we live in a scary world, a world where people don't understand each other well enough. And it's that it's understandable. It, it's 100 percent understandable. That doesn't mean that you need to allow that fear to hold you back, to trap you in. The more that you feel as though you have to sit back and wait for your life to happen, the more your life happens all around you, completely out of your participation. So let's get a little bit of closing thoughts. Spirit, can we get closing thoughts here for pile one? Pile one, can I have you guys take a deep breath, please? Um, can you roll your shoulders back just a little bit? There's some, I there's a tension here and it came out when the journey card came out. This brought a lot of, <sighs> but the journey card was like, you there, there was a tense up. Um, I'm not encouraging you to walk out a door in your life. I am saying that, every step forward when we open our hearts is a new journey and the journey is the perspective of the person going on the journey it, it's not me this is your perspective so if you have been getting messages of it's time to move it's time to let go it's time to walk away and your heart is not ready for that your heart is saying no that's not what this is trust your heart your heart is taking you where you need to go and every journey is a thousand steps i apologize i just accidentally hit the microphone okay that's better energy all right pile one okay nope all right oh yeah 
Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. I know that opening up, and especially opening up, um, I just heard to a new reader, if some of you are new here, um, can be a struggle because you may have heard it all. But sometimes when you have heard it all from someone else, it's a different perspective that helps. And that's what I'm here to bring. And now your cards. <laughs> See, your cards are a lot looser finally. Thank you so much. We have the card 14 with family tree. And I love, I love the connection here because we've got family tree and we've got the waiting game here. Um, the family tree says expansion and legacy. Um, family trees are... We can have multiple families. We can have our soul family. We can have the family that we choose. We can have the family we were born into. And the more that you open your heart, the more you, you open it up to allowing yourself to see family and see your family expand in a way that you didn't necessarily expect. Um, some of you may just want to look into your your heritage. Look further beyond three generations, four generations. And then we have the card number six, up from the depth with releasing difficulty. So this is this is a deep, deep fear energy that is helping you understand that it is you're you're essentially laying a legacy. You're you're laying the foundations and the legacy of a new branch within your family. Um, it, this is kind of ancestral in nature, so you're it's like you're branching off from your family, from from the family you were born into. You're staying connected to them, but you're branching off, and you're saying, "Okay, I'm going to allow this branch." to blossom completely because I'm going to take these fears and I'm going to transform them, transmute them, change them, heal them, and I'm going to come out of it. And in doing so, I'm going on this inner journey. I'm going to heal myself. I'm going to heal this piece that may have been lingering from my childhood. It may be lingering through the generations of repetitive patterns and I'm not going to engage in this pattern anymore. And when you do that, that difficulty that you release, you see you, she's walking up the stairs into this light. And that's what I said is it, it moves you into being able to shine in the world, being able to be the peacock. And so the dreams may feel frustrating. They may feel confusing. But what they're really here to help eclipse out of your life is the fear holding you back. The fear of heartache and loss. The fear of not being able to do what you want and go where you want and, and be surrounded by the people that you want and be surrounded by love that you deserve. Not being able to live the life of your dreams or live your life from your heart or trust the choices of your heart. It's quite literally saying this is what we're bringing forth to you to understand so that this can be healed out and we can move forward. So pile one, this is all I am seeing for you guys. I do want to say thank you so very much for being here. Thank you for listening, <laughs> for loosening up a little bit and letting me explain. Um, if you are new here, thank you for coming and checking out my channel. I very much appreciate it. And I want to also say thank you to your guides and my guides for helping facilitate the connection with the energies here. Thank you so much to Spirit for allowing me to sit here and channel for you and bring these messages forth. Pile number one, you guys know the drill. If you don't, if this resonated, there's the like, share, subscribe, and notification button up on top. And down in the description box, there are links to all my little projects, my books, my course, all that fun stuff. So you can check those out. Go up, go down. And then I will let you guys go here. And I will see you at my next reading. I love you all. Bye. Hello, Pile 2. If you chose the second card, you chose card number one and the ancient ones. And 
the card, the, the number one is about leadership, but it's also about new starts. It's about, um, especially with your pile in particular, it is with almost like a reset of the past, but not in a way in which the, the lessons have to be repeated because they've been learned. And what I'm getting really strongly before we get into the card itself is the the cycle has ended and it is beginning anew so i i can't tell you necessarily what that means i just know that that's what is coming through so we're going to read the card the ancient ones and then we'll talk about the dream images that i was given for your pile so the essence of the Ancient Ones says, The Ancient Ones are the shamans of old who defeated death and escaped from the tyranny of time. The Ancient Ones once walked the earth like us in flesh and bone. Now they reside in infinite infinity and can counsel us after we say yes to our calling. They are available to help us attain our full realization. The invitation, the Ancient Ones, are inviting you to reach to the future to help birth a new destiny for the earth. Go ahead. Find out who you are becoming 10,000 years from now. If you accept the invitation, great power and blessings will come your way and allow you to craft a new destiny for yourself. Do not hesitate to bite off more than you can chew because you have unlimited spiritual resources available right now. And for some of you, the medicine that they are calling for you to understand is the ancient ones beseech you to examine your attitudes and actions and be sure that they are of the highest integrity not forgiving an ancestor or yourself is keeping you from the freedom you seek remember this is no longer your karma you can break the chains that once bound you to the family drama and be free of your generational curses forgive the ones you need to release honor your biological ancestors by lighting a candle to them tonight and this is from the Mystical Shaman Oracle. I apologize for <laughs> not clarifying that to begin with. I just got this kind of um, rush of, of I want to know, I want to know. So um, the images that I was getting were kind of like a desert scene, but not entire. It's, it's almost like there's a desert that moves into like this, this fertile verdant greenery and there's a hawk flying over and I can hear drums and it's like this person is walking through the desert and they seem hunched over and very tired but there's a clear line of demarcation or, or a, a clear boundary line between the desert and the greenery and as the person passes over into the greenery, all of a sudden it's like water rushes through their entire body and they stand tall and they, they are surrounded by all of these different animals and people and there's a lot of celebration and you can still hear the drums but where it was very tumultuous in the beginning with the drum beats, it's all of a sudden very celebratory um, so I, if you have been having a dream very similar to that, this is definitely the message for you. If even just some of the themes, um, a hawk in your dream, um, the scream of an eagle, um, a tree on the edge of a mountain, drums, and some of you may have had like um, a bonfire in which it suddenly went from like the dark of night to the bonfire was gone and then you were in like like a city pool. I, I don't know. It's very, <laughs> very unusual imagery. But that is, those, those are all the images that kind of flooded in and, and the progression of them. But the ancient ones, when they talk about... Um, ancestral karma or generational karma it it's about the patterns of of actions and reactions behaviors beliefs thoughts um withholding 
and not not being honest and not being you know not living with integrity but also not allowing for forgiveness for the past even if it's just somebody in in this life if you have been wronged by someone or someone has hurt you in your past if you can find the strength and courage to f- give them forgiveness not not for their sake but for your own it what i'm seeing is like all of these these chains just bursting it, it's almost like they turn into glitter so the ancient ones are the people who came before those who walked the path of life before us i know in in this particular deck it talks about the shamans of old and how they overcame death but really what this is is the people who have walked the path of life before us who have taught us who have left their lessons left the history upon, and their mark upon the world and the things that we can learn from the ways in which they presented these things by getting in touch with our own intuition and finding the gaps and filling in the gaps and then allowing ourselves to learn certain lessons that weren't necessarily learned in the past from from these ancient ones to learn these lessons in our own unique way because when we do that we actually are stepping into our calling as as healers um and i i truly believe that we all are healers in our own way it doesn't matter how you define healer we all heal in specific ways that are specific to each one of us you know i have i am a reiki grandmaster i I read tarot and oracle cards. I am a studier of psychology all the time, all the time. But I also have been studying law in the justice system um, just on my own doing these kind of things because I want to see the different ways in which a healer can be presented into the world. We can heal in multiple ways and we don't even realize that that's what they're doing, even through music, through movies, through books. All of these things, these people who bring these things into the world are healers in their own right and we don't recognize it because we're unable to recognize the healer within us. And most of the time when we're unable to recognize the healer within us, it's because we have some sort of blockage that is not giving an allowance for forgiveness to somebody else because we perceive forgiveness to be an allowance of the behavior from the past. And that's not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is saying, I understand that we are all on our own journey. I understand that we are all on our own path. And I understand that you are doing the best you can at any given point in time, even if the best that you can is not aligned with what I perceive the best to be. Even if you cannot see your way out of your own darknesses, I still forgive you for that. And I forgive myself for engaging in this for longer than I should have. And I am choosing to move forward in my life. And a lot of you have had all of that realization and done all of that. But there's this kind of, it's not even a fear. It's just a trepidation or hesitation to take that next step into that leadership role in your own life, to make the choices to follow the calling of your heart, to follow the calling of your soul, to go forward doing what you want to do, what is right for you, because it does really fly in the face of the things that have come before, and it is a very big step. And so your dreams are telling you, they're showing you, they're trying to show you that you have moved yourself out of that state finally you have healed these patterns broken these chains and now it's time to step forward into this place and when you're in this place even the ancient ones who have made those mistakes in the past are there to celebrate with you because they are honoring you as you have honored them and even if you don't even realize how you've honored them, you truly have simply by being you, by walking your own path, by doing your own thing, by learning and growing and changing and healing and loving in a new way, in a way that was not tied to the things that you learned, but was definitely ingrained within your heart and your soul. And 
your dreams are trying to eclipse out this this little piece of hesitation and it doesn't even feel like it's all that much it just feels like a little what I like to call hiccup it's a little hiccup something may have happened in your outside world to reflect a hiccup back to you um, broken down car um, a random bill suddenly popping up an argument with somebody that you love that you guys have been on really good terms with something like that just this this little bit of of resistance from the outside world because you're not recognizing the internal hesitation that you're feeling quite yet and so it has manifested in the outside world which makes you kind of wonder whether you have actually healed this and moved on and your dreams have been trying to show you that yes this this was the eclipse that helped you understand that those patterns from the past have been healed through you through your actions through your heart through your words through you standing up in your own personal integrity and moving forward and that's a big deal so let's let's get a little bit more okay um we have conflict and defeat the card number five and then the card five financial and material changes and then on the bottom or down here we have the card six with harmony um and i didn't read the back of the cards for the other one but i also have the card six here with material and spiritual prosperity and i felt very called to show you guys that so you guys have sixes and fives so it's it's almost as if you've been in this five energy for well long enough this this change this continual upheaval this conflict this chaos you've been in that you've been defeated you've you've struggled you've had these hardships you've had all of these different changes in your life in your finances and see the financial and material changes that's what i was talking about the the more that you um have gone through this conflict and defeat the more it has manifested as financial and material changes because of an in internal and now you guys are moving out of this five energy. You're taking the leadership role and you're moving into six energy. And six energy is all about harmony, balance, unconditional love, healing. And in this deck in particular, it's material and spiritual prosperity. So you are learning how to balance your material world and your spiritual world. You're learning how to balance your connection to the old while being in the new. And that is not an easy journey. That it, it just genuinely, it's not an easy journey. That harmonious nature is not one that, that comes about without having to go through these conflicts, without having to go through these massive upheavals and changes, without having to basically hit rock bottom, keep digging yourself, you know another 50 feet down and then have to climb your way out without any help that journey that you have been on where it has seemed like i can't get kicked because i'm already down and i'm down as far as i've ever been and then you get kicked again that journey has not been for nothing that journey has been so that you could find the own your own strength your own courage your own conviction your own integrity your own truth and move forward and as you do that consistently you find this harmony and i am saying i'm seeing this harmony is both internal and external it's a harmony within your life within all aspects of your life within your relationships within your friendships so we have the card 47 the thinking woman and i was just going to say within your emotional and your mental body so that definitely confirms that um some of you may have been doing a lot of research a lot of reading some of you may be writers or some of you may just have come across someone who has really made you think about your life um the card 19 with rest and rejuvenation i love that and on the back we have the fifth shocker with archangel gabriel um so what i was going to talk about is and if you've been following my channel for a while you know that a big proponent of of my time lately has been watching the um, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp trial. And the reason why I felt so called to watch it is I had spiritual lessons that I was learning through it, but I also had personal and deep, deeply personal lessons that I needed to learn 
through watching this trial, through seeing the interactions and understanding the interactions and and seeing something in front of me that was challenging a belief that I had about the justice system and and hearing victims and I don't want to get too far into that because I don't want to I I don't want to bring politics into this because this is definitely a channel that is meant to bring people together and not divide them but something has come in to make you rethink the way that you view different things in your life the way that you listen to your mind over your heart the way that you perceive the world but also what your path is and this thinking woman can get really caught up in the mind and not understand that the heart speaks a lot louder when you give yourself the time that you need to rest and 47 reduces to an 11, 19 reduces to a 10, which reduces to a 1. There is a hyper emphasis, and it did not escape my attention that we've got a 6 and a 5 and a 6 and a 5. And when you mathematically combine those, they become 11. Of course, Archangel Gabriel is 39, which is a 12, which is a 3, which is actually, you know, very divine everything so this is literally a new beginning in your life it is a new beginning where you're going to be heard the thoughts that you have the insights that you have the the wisdom that you have and how you choose to present that into the world is meant to be heard and you're going to get a lot more time to take a break to take some time to yourself to rest to rejuvenate your energy to disconnect from the things that have been plaguing that mindset for so long. Um, some of you may be avid readers who just haven't had a chance to pick up a book lately and read for pleasure because you've been studying. Um, if some of you are in college and you have been like, oh, it's midterms, I can't do this because I have to study. This is saying that the time has come, is, is coming or has come for you to be able to put those down. And you should allow yourself to do that. Even if you're not in college and you are similar to me, I guess, where you get on to a spiritual kick of, I know that I'm moving on into the next phase, so I want to be as educated as I possibly can be. And so you spend a lot of your time doing research. You spend a lot of your time doing reading it's important to incorporate this rest and rejuvenation. It's important to incorporate meditation in whatever way is suitable for you. And for me, I do a lot of meditation through reading or through just watching a movie because I'm able to disconnect from my internal world without escaping. I'm not doing it in an unhealthy way anymore. And some of you need to understand that it's okay to engage in these activities if you're engaging in them because you can't face the truth of your life, because you can't face whatever it is that's going on internally, that's escaping. But if you're doing these things because you genuinely enjoy them and they bring you peace and they bring you comfort and they get you to sit down and take a break, do that. Allow yourself to do that because here's a perspective for you that you may not have heard. If you've been on my channel before, you have. But if you're new here, something that you may not have ever, have heard on this perspective is every single thing in this world every person every bird every tree every plant every book every movie everything that is in this world is a tool for us to learn through and if you can understand that or if you can perceive it that way then you can see that these things aren't here to help us escape to get us to be distracted they're there because at the underlying nature of them. There is some sort of message or lesson or awareness that you can gain through engaging in watching them or listening to this music or whatever it is. If it's something that brings you peace, it brings you harmony, it takes you out of the conflicting energy and into a state of rest so that you can rebalance yourself, it is to me, equivalent to meditation. It is a spiritually led journey, a spiritually divine moment. 
And no one and nothing out in the world can take that from you and from your awareness. Now, I know a lot of readers who have lived their lives in a state of escape until they found spirituality and found all the lessons of what they had learned during their state of escape. I know um, I have watched a lot of Esotero's, Esotero, Esotero, um, readings in which she has talked about this where you know she watched a lot of this tv show or that tv show and it was in a state of escape because of the way that her her emotions were or whatever i i don't know the finer details because i don't know her personally but the point here is that now that she is doing what she's doing she has a lot of references for for people her age or younger than her that will understand the references she's making so she can bridge spiritual truths with pop culture. I know um, I have I've watched multiple people do this. Um, Lexi the Leo does this. Uh, the Dunn Creative does this. I believe Kino Taro does this because what you're doing, um, even, even Bahati Life has done this. Because what you're doing is you're taking something from your frame of reference and you're looking at it from a spiritual perspective and you're seeing that quite literally spirit is everywhere and in everything. Which means that if you have gotten to this point in your journey, then you know already that you have crossed from the desert into the grass. You have crossed in, I don't know why I keep seeing a city pool. <laughs> Um, maybe some of you never got to go to like the city pool as a kid and, and you always had to like be on the outside and watch other people swim because whether it was family finances or some sort of family rules that said that you can't do this, this isn't something you can engage in. So you just had to watch all your friends doing these things and all the kids doing these things and not be able to participate in that aspect, which is, I don't know where that came from. So I'm guessing that is spiritually given. But it's like you're, you're being handed the keys to the kingdom. It would be the spiritual equivalent of it. You're being handed a pool pass. It's time for you to go and do this. You're being handed a, a picnic in the park instead of a journey in the desert. This is, you, it, it's okay to take this next step. It's okay to move forward in this way. It's okay to actually be balanced in your life and to trust that you are, it's okay for you to move forward, to share your truths, to share your wisdom, to share your insights, but it's okay to step back and let yourself rest. It's okay to allow yourself to engage in the things that some people may have made you believe aren't okay for you to do. It's okay for you to experience the things that you thought that you weren't able to do and to forgive the people who have taught you those things because they didn't know any better than what they were working with at the time that they were working with it. Wow. Um, this reading, pile one was very, very intense, but your guys' is, is on a whole nother level. And I, I am... Very, very honored, but very appreciative because I'm getting insights through this about my own life and my own journey. And I love that because I get to learn as I'm helping others all the time. And it's such a beautiful experience. So let's get just some closing messages for you guys. This is the Energy and Spirit Oracle. And I it's a relatively new one for my channel. And I just love it. Look at this. We have Shamanic Healer cleansing and attunement i love that and look there's an eagle right up on top of the head like i said the scre a screaming eagle um and i did see it flying overhead that's amazing thank you spirit for the confirmation so yeah this is it's quite literally just like helping you cleanse all of these things out so that you don't have these little hiccups and, and resistances anymore and then <laughs> we have the card 24 with balance which also reduces to a six and then the card 12 with elementals, nature, spirits, and the four elements. Yeah, this is, it's centered energy, self-care. That's the same as the rest and rejuvenation, um, balance and harmony. It, it quite literally is, you're, you're finally learning to tap into all of the energies within you. You're cleansing everything out. You're getting attuned. 
um, this attunement that I feel here is really about that calling that you have felt that you have been like, okay, you know what, I'm, I'm going to throw caution to the wind and I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to jump forward. I'm going to go into this because this is what's right for me. Um, and some of you are actually starting to see like the actual magic in the world. You're, you're starting to see things that you normally would have passed off as being like coincidental or whatever. Um, like the sixes and the fives falling, um, the surplus of ones, um, a three and a three, all of these kind of things, repetitive numbers that you wouldn't normally see that you wouldn't, you would just kind of be like, oh, okay, whatever, that's the time. Those things are starting to become ever more prominent in your life. Not that repetitive numbers haven't been prominent, but it's more like when you see them, you don't have to look them up anymore. When you see them, you just know what the message is. You know what the meaning is. You know what your guides and spirit are saying to you. You know all of that. And it's kind of caught you off guard. But the more that you move forward on this path on and don't, don't let that little bit of resistance hold you back, the more that that magical nature of everything is going to open up further and further. And the more that you implement these self-care regimens, um, whether it's taking a bath, taking a shower, you know, brushing your teeth, um, th those are really basics. But like reading a book, watching a movie, taking some time to say, okay, you know what? I really love this, so I'm going to engage in this. And I'm not going to judge myself for it. I'm not going to feel as though I am being resistant to my path or I am breaking any kind of spiritual rules you are more and more shaping and molding your own unique journey in this life. And that is exactly what your your ancient ancestors have been trying to help you do, is shape your own journey. Make up your own mind. Follow your heart. Not what this person says you should do or that person says you should do, but what you know is right for you because that is a blessing, a gift, and Part of what I'm hearing is part of your soul contract here is that you get to shape it. You get to shape this destiny. And that maybe, maybe some of you are having a hard time understanding what your destiny is in this life or what your path is in this life because some people just get to shape it. And the people who get to shape it, even, even if they do it on such a small scale, which I don't feel like you are doing, I don't feel like this is a small scale pile, but even those who do it on a small scale, when you shape your own destiny, you quite literally shift the destiny and the path of generations that came before. You heal generations that came before. You heal pieces that came before. And that's what you guys are doing. That's why your dreams have been showing you these transitions. And they can feel very dis, like just disjointed. Almost like this doesn't make any sense to fit together. But they, they feel like they don't have any sense to fit together because you don't fit into the pattern of the norm. And this is telling you that you don't, you're not meant to. You're meant to be you. You're meant to make your own mind up and you have all of this help and this love and and this encouragement all surrounding you to move you into that. Wow. <laughs> wow. Pile two. This went way longer than I thought it would, but I am really, truly blessed. I am really, truly honored. I want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for being here, for hearing these messages, for doing what you do, for choosing your path. And I also want to say thank you to your guides and my guides for facilitating this connection between us and the energies. And thank you so much to Spirit for allowing me to sit here and to share your messages with the collective for Pile 2. Pile 2, thank you again. If this resonated, you guys know the drill. Up on top, there's the like, share, subscribe, and notification button and down in the description box there are links to my books my program and you know a plethora of other things so you guys can check out the links down below and go ahead and hit the little fun little buttons up on top so thank you again so much pile two i am so honored to be here with you and i will see you guys all next time i love you love you bye
Hello, Pile 3. If you chose the third card, you chose the card 13 and the crow. And I am going to read the meaning of the crow from the book. This is from the Mystical Shaman Oracle. But before I do that, I want to talk about the card number 13. Um, I have been, <laughs> it's been kind of an interesting reading so far with the other piles. Um, my natural instinct is to go with numerology, so I would reduce it to a four and, and talk about four energy. But I'm being pulled to focus on the, the number uh, 13 and the way that it corresponds to the death card in the tarot. And the death card is actually the card that represents Scorpio, which is where this lunar eclipse occurred. And as I was getting prepared for your pile, as I was tapping into the energy, even as I was setting my my intention, my personal intention before I go into the reading, there was like this, I want to call it almost a brain fog, but it was like the words just disappeared and the thoughts just were gone and everything felt very... Um, Spirit, what was the word that came through? Um, it's um, <laughs> it's been, and this is how it's been. It's been very difficult to tap into your dream energy. Um, some of you may be struggling to actually remember your dreams or to remember all the pieces of your dreams it's almost as though there are certain aspects of it that pop out and then the rest is just really really hazy there's a lot of um resistance going on that i can feel there's it's almost like an illusion um disjointed isn't the word but it's similar to that i want to say it starts with a d but i just i can't quite identify it and that is actually the essence of the dream energy that i've been getting from you guys is though there's something and the way that the crow is looking is what caught me the most is, is it's as though the crow is looking to the past so you may be having dreams relating to your past relating to past relationships past people in your dreams but everything seems very um almost cartoonish um but not in cartoon form, you know, obviously. Maybe maybe some of you are having dreams that appear to be in a cartoon form. But, oh, yeah, in, in cartoon form, um, very mystical, um, but not, it doesn't feel like a good kind of mystical. It's almost like illusions. Like, I just, I just keep picking up a lot of illusions, almost Neptunian energy. Um some of it may have, maybe you are like dreaming real life, like the little mermaid, like you are the mermaid in, in, in real life, or um, maybe the name Ursula is, is important to you, the color purple. I don't know why these are coming through, guys, I'm just going to let whatever flows through come through before I read the book. But it's, there's some sort of dishonesty that that is being perceived in in your psyche right now you're it it's kind of a disillusionment that's the word it, there is some sort of disillusionment that needs to be occurring and that's why i kept getting illusions because there may be some sort of illusions occurring in your waking life and your dreams are trying to give you the disillusionment they're trying to take those those um it's like it's like taking the shades down or, or, or pulling the curtains back or something. There, there's something that is blocking up your ability to speak about something. And you can't speak about it because there is an illusion of something going on in, in your physical world where it's saying you're not allowed to speak about this or this isn't what really happened or whatever. And your mind is literally trying to show you the reality of it. But because the reality of it is so far off from how your conscious mind perceives it, it has created this 
this kind of dissonance energy or or imagery um sorry guys uh my nose itches terribly right now um oh heavens and and you're trying to you're you're trying to use your own personal discernment of what you're seeing and how it applies and because it's coming in through the dream state as the disillusionment as the truth as the reality your dream state is always a state of of just sim symbolism so you're seeing everything in in a symbolic form but it's it's about you finding a way to translate that into your physical world because something is locking up your throat chakra is what I feel. Um, and that's that would be, you know, me having these starts and stops, these struggles to uh, find the right word, to say the right thing, or to be able to adequately or accurately describe what it is that I'm trying to say. I feel like it doesn't feel like a complete and utter throat chakra blockage. It feels almost as though it's just, it's on um, kind of like a CD when it, it skips. You're in a skip mode on your throat chakra and it it's a stumble pattern because you're trying to pull a truth out of you that your conscious mind is like, no, 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 we're, no, we're not going to do this. No, we're not going to do this. And you want that that clear path forward to speak. And your dreams are trying to help you with that. And then we go back to that um, death energy. And it's like something in the past. It's time for that to die. And I don't mean a literal death at all. Like that needs to come forward firmly. It's not a literal death. There is a metaphorical, spiritual, emotional. Like it's time to lay it to rest because it's time to move forward and it's kind of like you're shifting into the highest um, scorpionic energy in your in your life um, you guys may be scorpios or have um, mars in scorpio or venus in scorpio um, some of you may have your moon in scorpio you don't have to have those placements for this to apply but those are the planets that i was seeing um for falling within the chart and Scorpio would be on the bottom of your chart instead of the top of your chart is what I was shown um, if that applies to you again it doesn't have to apply for this to be your message but those are very specific pieces that I was just shown so I want to make sure that if the, you are here with those pieces that you know that this is genuinely the right message for you so on that note those those um especially with like Mars, Venus, the moon, those energies are your emotional body, your personal values, your sense of self-worth, your, your self-belief, your sense of, of ambition and determination and drive and, and what you can accomplish in this life. Those kind of belief systems that you have maybe had holding on to in the past that have really held you back because of a, oh, I apologize. See, even your, even your camera view is getting fuzzy. Um, those, those kind of things have been very clouded based off of past experiences. And because of that, the more that you try to move forward into, in, into what you're doing now, and it's different for everyone. Um, I'm seeing podcast, um, musician, uh, somebody wants to be a therapist or, um, social worker, counselor, licensed counselor, school counselor. Um, teacher um, somebody wants to be a firefighter is what I'm picking up anyway so whatever it is you're trying to incorporate this new truth into into your waking life and into what you're here to do in the world um, and you're struggling with with bringing those together without it being all chaotic and this the, the moon came in to help pull these dreams out and help you understand how to correlate or how to how to bridge that between the symbolism and how it applies into your life it kind of feels like a puzzle it feels like a logic puzzle i don't know if you guys ever did a logic puzzle but when i was a kid i used to do these logic puzzles and it would be a word puzzle and then you'd have like a check mark box 
that would slowly reduce down and you would have to you know read the clue and then check off the pieces that you know so that you can find out what the answer is like whatever it is um it's kind of like that you're you're picking off pieces of what you're aware of but some of it is you have to find your way through and the thing about the logic puzzles is even if you would justify a logical method to sorting something out there it's still not 100 percent logic because you have to use your intuition in a lot of it and that's something that i learned the hard way um but yeah that's that's the that's the opening channel for what you guys are dealing with i it, hope it made sense because it felt very very kind of cloudy to me um so we're going to go ahead and read the the meaning of the card from the book and it says the essence is crow is the keeper of universal law the law of truth crow teaches us to walk our talk to find con congruence between who we say we are and who we really know ourselves to be this winged one insists that we speak truth and we create truth instead of searching for it and that we bring truth to every situation we find ourselves in. The invitation says, when you speak the truth and practice truth, eventually everything you say becomes true. Your power to co-create with the truth is the universal law. Correct what is untrue in your life without judgment. Let the truth set you free. And the medicine is, be true to your word. Crow arrives just as we have convinced ourselves that we are doing what is right and justified. And while this may be the case in the realm of relative truth, in the higher realm of absolute truth, it is not. Look deeply into your heart and remain alert, lest you convince yourself of something that isn't deeply true for you, or perhaps is not the highest truth. Do not seduce yourself with illusions. Oh my god. Okay, I swear I... I didn't read all of that before. I I have worked with this deck, so I do know some of it. I did read the initial part, um, but I didn't read the medicine because I almost never read the medicine because I don't read cards in reverse. I usually will take that and then discern for myself what the lesson is. But for some reason, <laughs> and I think we just learned the reason, Spirit has been having me read all of the card understanding so yes um like i said it there's there's something with the throat chakra as far as speaking your truth but the illusions that i feel have been created based off of something in the past that you already know is an illusion but you're having a hard time figuring out how to bring that illusion into awareness without falling victim to the way that the illusion was created and that was where it, the you know the card talked about um truth without judgment it's speaking about something that has occurred without vilifying or judging or um condemning or you know putting yourself above somebody else because you understand this is the truth and i think it feels like that's what what is catching in your throat you're doing your best to to mind your words but this isn't about being that excessively mindful of what you say it's about how you say it the energy you present to it is this an energetic tie from your heart to your throat or is this coming from an imbalance in your solar plexus chakra where you have your ego is completely out of control and you're speaking some sort of egoic truth. And that is a distinction that I feel like you're struggling with here. Um, in order to be able to, I apologize for hitting the mic, in order to be able to move forward. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> I'm just going to put this right here because, yep, like I said, card five and the throat chakra. Okay, everything is just kind of backwards. We've got two in the waiting game, 15 with temptation, and then five with emotional loss. Okay, we're going to center those. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. So the temptation card is actually um, the 
the devil card. And the devil card is literally the card that I associate with being stuck in your own head. You are going round and round and locking yourself in. And you're locking yourself in because you don't know whether it's ever the right time to speak out about this. You don't know whether it is okay to speak out about this. You want to, but you want to make sure this, 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 and this. Like It's like you have this checklist of what is and isn't okay for you to present this truth as. And sometimes the raw truth of the emotional loss that we go through, the emotional pain that we go through, sometimes the raw truth of that is exactly what we're meant to bring out because the raw truth of that is the emotional truth. And the emotional truth has nothing to do with the judgments of the mind. And the longer that you wait and you hold yourself back, the longer it feels like you are not able to move forward. And then you start falling victim to the actual mindset that you're just this judgmental person. You're just this bad person. You're just this or you're that. And you have the capability within you to not see that about yourself, to not fall victim to that about yourself. I know they talk with the temptation card a lot about addiction, um, you know, like going into excess or getting addicted to something. And what I'm actually hearing is um, I, I wrote a book a while back. It was like a year ago that it was published. Um, and something that I had forgotten that I had written about that I was reminded of when my friend Jesse read the book was I talked about anxiety and negative mindsets and how that becomes a sort of addiction for us. There is also an addiction to perfectionism or to fitting within a specific standard or a specific box or exactly how it is meant to be. There is this this almost addictive nature to that kind of thinking, that kind of behaving because you it goes down to the basis of wanting to be seen in a specific light and wanting to and it's not about your ego wanting to be seen in a specific light it's that you want someone to believe you because you want to be heard so badly because you haven't been heard you want to be heard so badly that you want to make sure that you are following whatever societal standards are or whatever your parents have said or whatever your friends have said or whatever this person or this professional or this entity or whatever has said to you is how you have to present it. Um, are you guys authors? Because this feels a lot like a challenge that I have been through in the past with my writing that I had to really overcome and maybe it's just that the parallel is there for me to be able to explain it to you. Um, when I was writing my first book something that I was told was um, you write for your heart and your art so you self-publish and if you are writing for major publication then you have to allow for a lot of what you've written to be subject to being changed and molded and shaped by someone else outside of yourself. Um, and of course, I'm paraphrasing, but this is the basis of my own understanding of it. And so as much as I wanted to be published on a major publisher, it was about the essence of the words, the way that the, everything flowed out of me, the constant spiritual affirmations or assurances that I received during the times in which I sat and I just feverishly wrote at my computer. The tingles, the crown pressure, the third eye visions, the the sense of being hugged from my spirit team as I was writing really difficult, difficult things about my past. These are the things that I wanted to preserve the essence of but I really had this deep desire for these words to be heard by the world, to be seen by the world, to help others understand they're not alone in their journey, the same journey that I have been through. And so I had to really break myself out of the mindset that this was meant to go to a ma major publisher and that it was okay for me to publish this myself because it was about getting the message out there. It was about getting the words out there. It was about getting the story out there and not editing not mincing okay I did some editing not my best work and I I'll give you that like it's not my best work and that's okay with me that's okay because I have a perfectionist tendency sometimes you have to learn to be okay with things that don't fall under your checklist sometimes you have to understand that if you want to speak 
a truth into the world and especially a truth that is deeply tied to your heart, deeply tied to your emotions, the longer you wait to be able to get everything aligned with that checklist, the longer you're giving in to that obsessive or, or addictive nature of the mind holding you back and putting you into this waiting pattern that you don't need to be in. It's as though you're afraid of breaking something. And it, of course, the card that we got is six with contract. Um, it's like you think that you're betraying somebody that you had a contract with or you, you're you betraying... Oh, maybe some of you want to speak about something, um, you know, and this is an energy that is going through so strongly in the c collective and it will continue to go through. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> I am, I am so sorry, pile three. I have, I have not had overwhelming deja vu like this in, in, in almost a year. Wow. I had a vision of doing this reading a year ago. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is an <laughs> Wow. Okay. S sorry, major revelation moment. Um I hope you enjoyed that. But the contract card, there is this ha massive energy going through the collective and I understand that because I am tied to it and I'm tied to it because spirit led me to it so that I could understand some of the underlying energies for why these things are popping up right now. So the major energy that's running through the collective and the reason why has everything to do with the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial and speaking truth and speaking truth from an emotional state versus speaking truth because I want to be seen this way and I want to be heard this way, whatever it is, because justice is blind. Justice is blind to the checklist. Justice on a spiritual level, justice hears truth, which means they hear it in what you speak. It doesn't matter what checklist you present to them. Justice hears the truth on a spiritual level. So this is about understanding that the contract, the agreement that you have with your own soul and your own journey and your own healing outweighs anything of any checklist out in the world. That is a stronger contract, unbreakable, by anyone other than you and spirit, like you and God, you and source, you and the universe, whoever is your higher power, the only two who can break that contract, which is your soul contract, is those two. And I'm pretty sure you'd have to be on board. And yes, this could go against other spiritual rules that you may have learned but that is that was that was an overwhelmingly powerful energy that I just felt like your contract to your truth to your journey to your path is way stronger than anything anyone says no one dictates that but you the illusion is is that you're in like impeding on something or you have to fall in line in some way that you have to actually disregard your own truth and path in order to fall in line that is not the case and I can I can't even tell you guys how strong this energy feels right now how insistent oh my gosh and then I get we you get the angel of strength and when you've got five 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 this is Wow, this is just, and the card 48 with the angel of balance. And the contract card literally is about balance. It, it's the scales of justice and, and how it balances out in life. And wow, okay, this is literally saying like, yes, I know that there is this here. I understand that. But you understand things differently and you understand things differently for a reason. You see through illusions of certain things. You see through it because you are emotionally connected to it. You understand the emotional level of it. And it is that that you have come here to share. And there is no one in the world who will be able to break that contract. Who will be able to stop you from walking your soul's journey. So 
it's time for you to understand just how strong you really are. Just what level of strength you have within you and the strength and power and might of your spiritual team to back you up because you understand things on a completely different scale and you actually do see through the illusions but it's like you're afraid to speak out through those illusions spirit what else do we have for pile three um wow shamanic healer cleansing and attunement um was it you guys that I said was going to that higher scorpionic energy? So, okay, so a, the Scorpio energy goes from the scorpion into the eagle into the phoenix. And I felt very strongly you guys were phoenixing finally. And this means that you guys have been in this cleansing state. And, and yeah, so you've been in that cleansing state. And now it's time for you to move into the next phase. You're moving out of the eagle energy, which the eagle energy sees way more than what you see or I see with our physical eyes. Same with the crow. The crow sees. It sees the mystical. It sees the magical. It sees the all sorts of stuff that we just don't see. You are one of those who sees that. You see the illusions. You see the illusions of even time. But you see the illusions of... The things that people say and things that people do and the way that we perceive our souls. I want to know what you do because holy crap. That's amazing. Please share that. <laughs> Please. Um, we have 38 with personal guide, guardian angel, and spirit family. And then we have the card number nine with the healing heart. Love, acceptance, and romance. So yeah, and again, I told you guys this felt very tied to that. So the reason why your energy is being infiltrated or, or flooded with this, with your dreams, is because that collective energy is very, very strong. There is an entire world watching this case. It is literally being broadcast worldwide on the internet. So every time you interact with the internet, you're interacting with this energy. And so it's presenting in your life in a way that is helping you see and hear justice on a whole different level. You're, you're, you're tapping into your, your inner sense of justice within the world and how we want to believe certain things, how we want to perceive certain things, and how these things have really held us back as a society. And it is up to you because you're the one who contracted to come here and do this, to find a way to come forward, to show your strength, to show your truth, and to show how everyone has love and is accepted. And you literally have guardian angels around you right now, helping you, guiding you. You have an entire family of your spiritual ancestors surrounding you and guiding you because you see the path from the back you see the way that time has ticked by you see the way that it has gone through you see all the lessons we should have learned and didn't and now you are learning how to unlock it and speak it into existence in the world and your dreams which feel very much like illusions and hazy and and disjointed and kind of all over the place it's because you're picking up all the missing pieces finally that you haven't been able to pick up before so you don't need to see it all you just need to see the pieces because when you are able to shift out of it you're going to be able to put all the pieces together like a puzzle but the puzzle is already completed these are just the missing pieces that you haven't been able to see quite yet so the missing pieces are finally being put into place and you're the one putting it into place. And when you do, then your path and your your way forward becomes completely and utterly clear for you. You just will know. What it is that you know, that's going to be specific to you. But you will know. And you will get confirmation of it in one way, shape, or form. You will get that confirmation. There is something very important that you are meant to do. And I have the feeling that you know it. You And you actually know what it is. So I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but you're just there's just this little sense of confusion with what the heck is this? They're they're pieces, they're missing pieces. When you take those pieces and you apply them, that's when you'll know. That's when you'll understand. But you have to translate them out 
but you you translate them out of the symbology through your heart chakra and out through your throat it's like you're taking I don't even know how it would work because it's coming through in your mind so it's coming through with like your third eye and your your crown and then you have to pop down and then back up I there's no actual like logic to it like I said with logic puzzles there's an intuitive aspect of it so there is no way to logic this you have to intuit it you have to use your intuition and you can and you will and this is literally like it's healing now you're able to help others see how to how to get here because you've done it it's balance and strength but you you understand it now wow wow okay i'm curious i am uber curious i cannot wait to find out um i'm gonna be your cheerleader through this process uh, okay pile three i am your cheerleader through this process because whatever it is i have the feeling it's going to change lives wow okay pile three thank you so so much for being here thank you so much to your guides and my guides for facilitating the connection between me and the energies Thank you so much to Spirit. Thank you, Spirit. Like you came in hot and strong during this message in order to get this very, very clear and very powerful and potent. And I appreciate being the one to be your channel. Thank you so much. I am honored and blessed. And thank you for letting me share this with Pile 3 and with the collective. Thank you. Pile 3. You guys know the drill. If this resonated, there's the, you know, like, share, subscribe notification buttons up on top down in the description box you guys can go to the links to my books my program all the fun stuff so buttons on top links down below and i want to say thank you again one more time go do the damn thing i am so proud of you guys you guys have been amazing you have done so much and don't don't give in don't give in to the outside energies you guys got this okay all right Thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much, Pile 3. I love you guys. I will see you next time. Bye. Hello, Pile 4. If you chose the fourth card, you chose the card Fire, and that is the card number 19. And 19 reduces to a 10 and to a 1. And as I say that, I'm actually seeing all the the major arcana cards in my head 19 is the sun and then 10 is the wheel of fortune and one is the magician and the first thing that strikes me that i'm being shown for your pile is there has been this journey um to kind of identify all three of these pieces within your life and your dreams are coming through to kind of clear clear some things out um i just heard clear the or clear or clean the slate um and i was hearing apocalyptic so some of you may be having some very um kind of disturbing disconcerting dreams that feel very apocalyptic in nature a lot of fire um explosions things like that that have left you in this kind of state of well is this is this some sort of premonitory something? Is this something? Um, <clears throat> but what I am feeling more than anything is this is a symbolic cleansing. So fire is a very cleansing element. Um, you do burning rituals in order to quite literally burn or remove something from your life that no longer is meant to be in it. And it doesn't always mean something physical. Sometimes it's just a piece of the past that is no longer applicable for who you are now, for the progress and the journey that you've made now. And we can be, we can be kind of resistant to understanding how we can work with a fire element because it's not always working on a physical level with the fire element. Sometimes it is a metaphorical working with it um things like the violet flame the violet flame is a visualization meditation that you use to cleanse your auric field 
in this case, there is an essence of in your dream state, and especially since this moon phase, which actually this circle right here on the card reminds me a lot of how the moon appeared. But it's this, this in your dream state, it's like there's this clearing out of your subconscious mind and of your unconscious mind of the things that may have just been kind of taking up space. Um, I'm seeing like folders or files in a filing cabinet that don't need to be filed anymore. They don't need to be there anymore. They have surpassed their expiration date of presence within your mind. And it's not that you're forgetting these things. It's just that the weight that they carried, they just it just doesn't carry the, the same kind of impact or weight in your life anymore. And so there's this cleansing of it. And it's like clearing out clutter, clearing out the paper trail, clearing out what you don't need anymore to be connected to because you have learned how to progress through. And the Sun card, the Wheel of Fortune, and the Magician card are all, in my in my eyes, they're all really positive cards because the Sun card obviously is considered the most positive card. It's just joy. It's happiness. It's got a child on a horse carrying a flag, and it's just this, the essence of joy. And the Wheel of Fortune card talks about destiny and fate and whether you're on the top of the wheel or the bottom of the wheel. And it is a very intricate, very esoteric card. However, what it feels like to me is you're trying to identify which parts of this journey around the wheel that you have gone on have been true happiness and which ones have been kind of fabricated happiness which is where the magician card comes in because the magician works with all the resources he has and just creates what he needs but he creates what he needs and sometimes we don't realize that we also should be creating things that we want because when we create what we want and it comes from a genuine place of, well, I don't really need anything. So this is what I want to do. This is what I want to create. There's an essence of, of true destiny and happiness infused into that creative action. And holding on to these old, these old things, these old thoughts or these old situations that you've already learned and you've already grown through. So now you know the lessons. You don't need to necessarily hold on to the intricate de intricate details of it those can be burned away and you may have been like incredibly tired lately incredibly drained of your energy and this feels almost has an essence of divine intervention where your team has come in and been like okay i understand you have done all of this we're going to do this part for you because we see all that you have done. We see this journey that you've been on. We see how hard you've worked. So let us clear this out here. Let us take all of this and wipe it away for you. And let yourself rest. If you're still feeling that energy drain, that almost it's almost like you're trying to touch inspiration, but you, you're too tired to <laughs> really fully engage with like the fiery, passionate, inspirational energy. Let yourself rest and take a break because when that cleansing came through and as many times as it did, I'm seeing like three to seven consecutive and like not days, but over the course of, of a week and a half or so, these were con consistent repetitive dreams um it was a, a deep like a really deep cleansing and really deep cleaning and your physical body needs the rest that it's not necessarily getting when these dreams are occurring so listen to your body first and foremost because your body really needs that rest so okay <laughs> that is the channeling so let's get into the card itself and i'm going to be reading from the mystical shaman oracle um, book about the the message from the card 
and then we'll get a few more messages from spirit so it says the essence fire consumes anything that it touches the flames quickly remind us of a, the impermanent nature of reality and how situations can quickly transform into beauty or chaos fire is passion and its dancing flames invite us to reach to the sky warmth and light are heavenly yet too much heat can scorch us to fully step into the energy of fire is to be utterly transformed like the phoenix rising from the ashes the invitation says warm your hands and your heart by your inner fire let it burn away your hardships let it consume your pain and your sorrow has life become too rigid too cold or too su superficial light a candle or make a bonfire and toss into the flames everything that has become stiff and painful give it all to the fire for rapid transformation set your life on fire the medicine are you feeling too fiery have you been reactive and short-tempered towards others this card has come to tell you that all fiery emotions directed at others can backfire at you. It is not a good idea to play with fire when you are out of balance or angry. Now is not the time to act or react. It's the time to tame and befriend your inner fire so it does not scorch you. So the the medicine portion of, of the book is actually talking about when the cards come out reversed. And if you've been here for a while, you know I don't read reversals. Um, I let the cards fall and then I, I read them intuitively. But what I'm picking up the most here is with everything that's going on, the, the level of exhausted you may be feeling or you are feeling, it can make you very reactive because you're not entirely sure what's going on internally. So it can make you reactive to the outside world. Um, one of the best things that I have ever done for myself is to be like, okay, I'm really reactive right now. I'm going to tell the people around me, hey, I'm in this state this is what i am feeling so be aware because i don't have full control over whether i'm going to react negatively and it's not it's not something that i'm meant to control because i know i'm working through emotions and that way the people around you understand this is the state you're in and that can be a really hard thing because it is opening up to vulnerability but if you don't open yourself up and allow for other people to see that you are as human as everybody else and you have emotions just like everybody else and you have reactions just like everybody else, then the reactions that you have are going to be perceived in a significantly different way because you're not being completely open and honest. It also keeps you from being open and honest with yourself. And all of that is stuff that is starting to be burned away because you've learned the value of vulnerability and of intimacy and of being honest with yourself and with others. And to really truly allow yourself to live from a heart-centered, passionate life. When you first get in touch with your inner flame, it can almost feel like, is it, am I really like this? Is this really who I am? And you're getting to the point where you are no longer allowing any kind of self doubt. And because you're getting to that point, there's that essence of it that's being washed away or, or really like burned away in your dream state. Sometimes it seems like our world is completely and utterly falling apart. And it seems that way because it's time for change. And so we can go through these internal changes while we're sleeping and not really understand that the internal changes are what are being reflected in the outside world and or vice versa. Like it can be both ways. You can be going through a massive amount of change in the outside world because you're not changing internally and then your internal world is kind of pressurized into a state of, well, I have to change because... I can't take the pressure out here anymore. So it really depends. Um, it feels like it's kind of a 70-30 split where 70% of you have been doing the work and and you're, you're just really tired. But 30% or so of you have not fully understood the, the pressure that you're feeling. And that pressure has manifested everywhere, internally and externally. And now you're starting to understand about the interconnected nature of our internal 
internal world and our energetic world and the outside world. And I don't know why I am so tongue-tied with your pile. It's very strange. Um, okay, so we have memories of love. I love that there is candles here because, again, candle flames. Card 16 with disruption, which is the tower card, but that is exactly what I was saying. Um, as far as, like things the pressure of things that's that's how the disruption energy feels and i was picking up a lot of mars energy so you may have mars in a fire sign in your natal chart you don't have to for this to resonate but that is something that i was picking up earlier um card two and spiritual union and we have another one here wow this is all very 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 heart based um the nine with fulfillment of wishes so on the back we have the card three heartache and loss and i wasn't going to show you this ex and i'm gonna put it away and the reason i'm putting it away is because it's time to put it away so as this as these fires kind of work their way through your subconscious mind and your dream state and your unconscious mind and your dream state it's working its way through because it's disrupting what your perception of your memories of the past are. Because when we go through really hard things, when we go through traumas, when we go through loss, when we go through these awful situations, a lot of the time we can hyper focus on the negative aspects. And when we hyper focus on the negative aspects, we actually openly welcome those negative aspects via our energy field and our mentality even if we we tell ourselves i'm not asking for this to come back in i'm not welcoming this to come back in we're still actively attracting that to us because in the energetic state that we're in that's the energy we believe that we deserve because that's what we have always known and when we can't touch into the actual points where there was happiness and love because in every relationship there is still happiness and love in every situation there is happiness and love it doesn't always mean that it lasts that it stays that it it remains but it's still there so the memories are still there within you but sometimes you have to burn away that heartache and loss that hard time those hard moments, those traumas, those trigger points, you have to burn those away. And the disruption card now to me, like in the beginning when it fell, it was like confirmation. But what it feels like is the more these memories come out, the more it kind of feels like a tower moment for you because now you're starting to realize, hey, it wasn't, it wasn't always bad. Even if it was bad at times, it wasn't always bad. And because it wasn't always bad, I don't have to hold on to that. And I don't have to break myself apart. And I don't have to feel torn in a million different directions in a million different places. I don't have to feel as though I can't do anything or move anywhere or be anything or whatever it is that you're telling yourself because of these, these lingering things. The more that these dreams have moved through, the more they have cleansed away the the truly painful parts of it and have left you with these memories that you can actually look back on in a state of love even if in the past they have been painted in a very painful light even if they were very painful experiences you can look back at them in a state of love because you have learned how to love yourself because you have learned what healthy love looks like because you have learned how to balance yourself because you know what what you have gotten out of it what you have grown through it learning and how it has helped instead of hindering you and that kind of awareness can really it, it can really shock you down to your core down to your very roots your very foundations it can shake everything you've ever known because now you can look back at at these horrible times and not feel weighed down by them and it's kind of like the the sun card and the wheel of fortune card and the magician card you're kind of wondering on almost at a conscious level some of you at a conscious level like how did i get here how how did i transform this way how did i transition into feeling 
this way because you weren't doing it in your conscious awareness. You were doing it in your dream state. And so it's like going to bed in one state and waking up in another and not understanding how that works. And then you spend some time in this new state going, am I, is this an illusion? Am I fabricating this? Is this, is this my truth? Is this actually how I'm meant to feel? Is this going to last? And spirit and your guides really want you to know that like, yeah, this is, this is where you're at. So now you're able to see what it looks like when you harmonize everything in your life, when you move from the heart. Some of you may be single and moving into a relationship. Some of you may just be balancing out your divine masculine and divine feminine. But some of you may be looking at your partner in a completely and dramatically different way and realizing the essence of who you're with in a way that you've never done before and knowing that that is literally the fulfillment of your wishes because now you can see it and, and you don't doubt it any longer. Um, some of you who are single have been wishing for someone, but you had to get beyond this seeing everything in the past as heartache and loss because that was just welcoming that back in and the time for you to come into a new relationship is now. And if you've been at, on my channel for a while, you absolutely 100% know I do not like doing relationship readings. All right, we've got the card 37, third chakra with Archangel Shamuel. And the third chakra is your solar plexus chakra. Um, I could be wrong, so don't quote me on this, but Shamuel, I believe, helps recover lost things. And this feels like you're getting help recovering that lost sense of personal worth, personal power. But it's rebalanced in a way that's very healthy. So it's not off kilter. And then we've got 32 with the door to spirit. Which is, oh, thank you so much, spirit. Um, and on the back we have the card 19, rest and rejuvenation. Remember what I told you guys. It, you feel drained in your, in your daily life, in your conscious life. Because at night you're washing away stuff. You're burning away stuff. Your guides are helping that. And what that's doing is it's like reaffirming your solar plexus. It's upgrading your solar plexus, if you will. It is kind of, it, it's like coming back online. It's recharging it so that it is more like the sun, the essence of the sun, the beautiful, bright, life-giving energy of the sun. And this door to spirit is simply like, honestly, it's just a simple confirmation for those of you who are in a connection right now or in a relationship right now, that what you have seen in the eyes of the par the person that you're with is, is truly a door to their spirit. You are truly seeing in. And I will always say that the eyes are the gateways to the soul. So you are... It is true. You are seeing that. And Spirit is saying, yeah, you have this doorway open for you. You are both moving forward in this harmony, in this balance, in this union. Now is the time for a fulfillment of your wishes. And I'm seeing like all of your chakras are becoming aligned finally because that solar plexus needed the upgrade. Because I see, you know, the root chakra is firing up. And you've got the solar plexus, but at the core of this root chakra is quite literally a lot of orange. And so to me, that's that's your sacral. And there's so much heart energy, but even this rest and rejuvenation is those higher realms. Door to spirit is the higher realms. So you've got all of the chakras here. Um, I know for some of you, I, I kind of felt a little bit of like, I don't see it. It's, it's okay. Sometimes... Sometimes you're not meant to see quite yet because you're not. It, I see in a different way than you see, I think is what spirit is that. Okay, we all have our own unique perceptions of things. I will perceive something in my way and you will perceive something in your way. But it does not make my way wrong and it doesn't make your way wrong. It just means that sometimes the perceptions have to be seen on both sides so that there can be an awareness. What is it that you were like, that's not what I see? Which which chakra was it? Because it's that chakra that is still working on aligning. Huh. 
that's really that's really interesting i i'm gonna have to make a note of that pile four thank you because i get that way sometimes <laughs> so we have the card six up from the depths with releasing difficulty and we have the card 30 soulful appreciation with heartfelt gratitude and then we have archangel raguel with justice harmony and solutions i love the balancing here what did i say things are coming back into balance things are aligning again so your chakras are being rebalanced because this this sacral or solar plexus forgive me solar plexus chakra needed to be recharged rebooted um and so the releasing difficulty is quite literally what i was talking about with the fire energy but this soulful appreciation is learning the value of saying thank you it's learning the value of accepting somebody being grateful for you and for what you are giving to them or sharing with them or helping them understand helping them see because our worth is is defined based off of what our heart is saying what our soul is saying and if your soul is saying my life is so hard i can't do this i'm not i can't do this the more you say i can't the more you are devaluing yourself so this is really saying if you take a look at all of the transformations that you've gone through because we've got the butterfly here if you take a look at all of the transformations you've gone through think about the way that it what it takes to become a butterfly you have to literally break down every aspect of what you are because a caterpillar will cocoon itself so it has to go through all the work of building this cocoon so you have to go through the work of cutting things out and and clearing things out and building your cocoon like creating a safe space for yourself and then you have to essentially liquefy yourself so you have to take yourself down to the the basest emotions and let yourself feel all of those emotions and get all of those emotions out and in when you're in that state it's really hard to be grounded it's really hard to be grounded because you are so much in your emotional body that you're floating in the ethers a lot of the time especially for psychics because you are cleansing these emotions but you're doing it on so many different levels that it's hard to be grounded during that and then you have to reground yourself and and work your way from chakra to chakra up you have to work on feeling secure in who you are and your place in the world and feeling stable within your home and your family life and your work life as well as your own emotional body while going through this massive transformation you have to slowly build it back up or slowly start taking form again and then you have to break yourself out of the cocoon you have to break down all the walls you have built and all the protective measures you have taken you have to break those down in order for you to spread your wings and fly it is not an easy journey it is not an easy process so be very grateful for you because you have endured this process you have gone through this process and you are getting help to finish in these stages it's like the the little bit of help to get the butterfly out of the cocoon is occurring now and that makes you far more valuable than a stack of gold coins it makes you more valuable than you could possibly compare anything else in life to and so when you genuinely are able to see that this is you and this is your worth and this is what you have done and what you've gone through and all of that all of the balancing that you have had to do for everything in your life the way that you have endeavored to make sure other people feel harmony you have found solutions for other people you have sought justice for wrongs for other people and now you are doing it for yourself and you're releasing all of these hardships and all of these difficult moments and all of the things that have been so compounded upon you and your mind and your heart that it makes it hard to see the light of day to see the sun to see the true essence of the people around you and and your own inherent intrinsic worth now you can do that be grateful for you we can go through all these pieces of gratitude i am grateful for this person i am grateful for this thing i am grateful for that thing i am grateful for whatever but you should start 
and end always with being grateful for you, being grateful for your life, for breathing, for still being here, for still moving forward, for enduring everything that you've endured. Be grateful for you and your strength, for you and your spirit, for you and your confidence, for you and your self-worth and your self-esteem because it is you who got you here. It is you who got you where from being back in this place of heartache and loss and out of that into a state of love and truth and harmony and balance and love and wishes and I I just keep wanting to say love over and over and over again so it's it's like yes you are deserving of love because you are love you are the essence of love and that's something that's very important for you to realize that your dreams are coming in and eclipsing out the things that have held you back from truly being grateful for you because it's time for you to emerge now wow pile four oh your hearts are so beautiful i want to say thank you so very much for being here thank you to your guides and my guides for facilitating the connection between your energy and mine so i could do this reading thank you so much spirit for allowing me to sit here and share my gifts but share your messages with the collective of pile four thank you again you guys know the drill. If this resonated, there are the fun little buttons up on top. You can like, share, subscribe, or hit the little notification bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. And down in the description box, you will find links to my books, my program, and and other links if you so choose. So check those out. You know, buttons on top, links down below. And I want to say thank you one more time. Pile fours, get some rest do the thing and be grateful for you because I am grateful for you. So thank you again and I will see you all next time. Bye!